Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode, we're talking about the Jacksonville Jaguars 2019 NFL Draft Class based on analytics. And if you're new to the channel and new to the work that I do, all terms and definitions will be in the description. Follow us up out of the way. Let's get to the first pick of the draft, which of course is Josh Allen, defensive end out of Kentucky. When you look at his data, very good athleticism traits and production traits. When you look at his athleticism, he had a 44.78 explosive lower body strength score, 87.32 speed score, and 87.22 flexibility score. Uh, based on my data, he pretty much hits all the Pro Bowl areas, but doesn't hit the All Pro areas when it comes to explosiveness. But this is still a very good athleticism profile for a player like this. You know, he's essentially someone who, who wins with speed and balance, which is something that does show up on tape with him. And then, of course, when you look at his production data, which is by far his best highlight, 99.35 in terms of solo tackle data, 96.47 in terms of sack data, and 92.65 in terms of tackle for loss data. All very, very high marks, all above the all-pro thresholds, all above the all-pro averages even. And he's essentially a player who has very, very high upside, you know, someone that it could easily be the best edge from this class more likely going to be the best edge from this class so we'll see what happens but ultimately his athleticism and his production both match and whenever that happens it's usually a very good thing uh, you know we're talking about someone who could be a Justin Houston Von Miller level guy Terrell Suggs you know names go on and on and on about what he could potentially be but bottom line is is that he's a very very productive and very athletic player then we get to the next pick of the draft, which of course is Jawan Taylor, offensive tackle out of Florida. Um, the only issue with Jawan Taylor is I don't have much data on him. He didn't do any athleticism testing to really determine much with him. So I'll just leave him blank, but he has good size characteristics and good length characteristics. So he has at least this sort of foundational stuff to be a starting tackle, um, but he, there's no athleticism to really see if he's athletic or not athletic. Uh, you know, there's really isn't much for me to talk about with him because he doesn't have much data. And of course, we get to the next pick of the draft, which of course is Josh Oliver, tight end out of San Jose State. Uh, when you look at his production data, 81.67 in terms of uh, passing yards, market share production, hits above the all-pro threshold, pro bowl threshold, and starter threshold. Uh, when you look at the averages at the position, he pretty much lines up with the averages of a pro bowler, but not an all-pro player but definitely hits the pro bowl and starter averages in terms of his production and then of course when you look at the athleticism testing 54.68 in terms of explosiveness 81.68 in terms of speed and 47.75 in terms of flexibility for his size pretty much hits every area he needs to hit with the exception of flexibility testing is kind of off by about 10 points when it comes to that but this is still good athleticism traits and i think overall he has a good chance to become a long-term starting tight end so he may not become like a special special tight end but he definitely has a shot to become at least a starting tight end based on his production, based on his athleticism traits. And of course, we get to Quincy uh, Williams, linebacker. Uh, he's someone who, you know, is related, of course, to Queen and Williams. Based on his production data, 95.18 in terms of solo tackle data, he hit above the all pro threshold, pro bowl threshold, and starter threshold. And in terms of averages, he's between an all pro and pro bowl player. The only issue is that his production was against a lower level competition. So he really more realistically has a chance to become a starter based on his production data um, because guys from lower level competition, I think the, the most recent example of a really, really successful one, of course, was a, was a South Carolina State linebacker from last year who had 99.99 percentile, basically had 20 percent solo tackle market share in terms of like his percentage of the team's solo tackle. So. Quincy Williams is not quite that, but he definitely has a good profile. And of course, when you look at athleticism, traits 90 percentile in terms of explosiveness, 79.15 in terms of speed, and 46.20 in terms of flexibility for his size. Doesn't quite hit all the areas he needs to hit in terms of all pro potential or pro bowl potential based on his flexibility testing. But still a good profile to be a starter. So I think Quincy Williams, at the bare minimum, has a very good shot of becoming a long-term starter um, at the linebacker position. Uh, and then, of course, we get to Ryquel Armstead running back out of Temple. When you look at his production data, 45.88 in terms of market share production. Doesn't hit the all-pro threshold, five-time pro bowl threshold, or three-time pro bowl threshold. Uh, and then, of course, when you look at the averages of the position, nowhere near the all-pro average, pro bowl average, or starter average. But when it comes to athleticism, which is probably why he was drafted, very good speed and flexibility traits, 29.44 in terms of explosiveness, 
90.97 in terms of speed and 80.5 uh, or, or 3.6 in terms of his uh, flexibility testing. Again, doesn't quite hit all the areas he needs to have. I mean, when it comes to the averages, his explosiveness is definitely a little bit less than you'd like. But definitely good speed traits and good flexibility traits for the position. I think he has a chance to become a starter, potentially. But he's definitely, um, you know, on the lower end of production. So he's someone that I think will have to be given the right opportunities to really shine. And then, of course, we get to the next pick of the draft, which, of course, is Gardner Minshew quarterback out of Washington State uh, when you look at his production data 75.27 in terms of high school production 87.57 in terms of FBS production these are his best single season scores so like his best season of high school football he scored this and his best season of college football he scored this in terms of production data hits at least the starting quarterback threshold for high school production doesn't hit the Pro Bowl area and when it comes to FBS data, he pretty much hits everything you want. But his only issue is when it comes to his career FBS data. His career in college, he's, he, his average is 52.98 out of 100. And in terms of the thresholds, in terms of his career data, he doesn't hit the all-pro threshold or the Pro Bowl threshold. At the position, does hit above the starter threshold. And when you look at the averages at the position, nowhere near the all-pro average, Pro Bowl average, or starter average. So Gardner Minshew has the pro sort of profile of a backup. Someone who probably isn't going to have the most successful career, but there is stuff you can see and you, that you could potentially work with uh, with him on tape. But he's just someone that I think his his career has not been very kind to him, and I think that will probably show up in the pros um, based on his overall data. And of course, we get to the next pick of the draft, which is Dontavious Russell. In terms of his uh, athleticism data, 36.60 in terms of explosiveness, 66.03 in terms of his speed, and 57.11 in terms of flexibility for his size. When you get to his production data, 63.51 in terms of solo tackle data, 43.78 in terms of speed data, and 45.32 in terms of flexibility data. Doesn't hit all the areas in terms of all pro potential or pro bowl potential, but does hit at least the areas in terms of starter thresholds. And I think that's how you should view him. I think Dontavious Russell has a good chance to become a starter but not much else after that. But definitely a decent profile, but just doesn't have all the traits that you want um, for a starter. So overall, how do I feel about the Jacksonville Jaguars draft class? I think it was a good class. I really do. Uh, I think Josh Allen is probably going to be the shining mark of the class. I think Josh, I mean, I think this class really does depend on Josh Allen to a certain extent because if Josh Allen doesn't hit the way that his data suggests, then the rest of this class won't really look as good. But I think if Josh Allen does hit, I think if uh, Josh Oliver uh, becomes a starter, I think if Jawan Taylor becomes a starter, because those are guys who definitely have a good shot at becoming that. And even Quincy Williams. I mean, Quincy Williams is someone that I think a lot of people panned or didn't like because of just the place where he played. But he has good enough data to become a starting linebacker at the next level. It was against a lower level competition, but definitely decent enough. So this class could be good I mean it could be very good uh, I think the more likely players to hit is Josh Allen compared to everybody else but I do think that overall if Josh Allen does hit that still makes it a great class because of just how high value a guy like Josh Allen is based on data and of course uh, my name is James Coburn you can find my other work at draftcoburn.wordpress.com you can also follow me on Twitter at Gemetrics and if you like this content and you want more content like this be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Share this video as well with anybody that you know. Hit that notification bell in case you want to be reminded when another video of mine drops. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.